Shalom. I want to give our honor, our praise, our glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rechakwadash, Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, who the Word and only calls God, Yahweh Shah, the only begotten Son, who the Word and only calls Jesus Christ. All right. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who move well. Peace, blessing, grace, and safety goes out to all the Akim around the world, preaching his word and truth and his sincerity. Shalom to the hope for elect. All right, Shalom to the one third remnant that consists of uh, um, men, women, and children from the nation of Israel, okay? That's a uh, mark for deliverance, all right? And I'm going to come back with another lesson, uh, basically about, man, the um, hey, this, this new world we're waiting on, man, all right? This new heavens and this new earth that uh, the elect are waiting on, man. That are waiting on the kingdom of heaven to be ushered in through Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh All right. So I'm just going to bring out some precepts about the, uh, the new heavens and the new earth. All right. And Adawan Ratazai, this is uh, comforting and uplifting. All right. Because hey, this is what I can wait on, man. New heavens and new earth. We're going to start out with uh, the uh, precept that you see on the screen. All right. Going to read it. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 17. It reads, for behold, I create new heavens and and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come to mind. All right? And that's what Yahweh Bashim is going to do to the elect, man. All right? He's going to put it out their memory, the hell that they caught in the Babylon the Great, man, and uh, various other parts around the world, right? All right? Read that again. It says, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Now, this is talking about a new rulership, new power structure, all right, because it's not going to create a new heavens and a new liter literal earth, all right? All right? It's just that this uh, earth, the heavens and the earth that is now is ruled in wickedness. It's ruled by Esau Edom, all right? He's going to create a refreshed heavens and a refreshed earth, all right? That's what that new uh, means, all right? And it says, and the former shall not be remembered nor come to mind. All right, say so, hey, when we get in that kingdom of heaven, we're not going to remember the uh, captivity and the hell that we caught uh, here on this side. All right. Uh, verse 18, it says, but be you glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem. For behold, I create Jerusalem, a rejoicing and her people a joy. All right. Verse 19, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem. And joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard and hurt, nor the voice of crying. All right. So yeah, how about Shemel Shai gonna um, uh, relieve us from our pain and stress and our agony, man? All right. And it says Jerusalem, Jerusalem, a people before its place, talking about the uh, the nation of Israel. All right. The ones that stem from the uh, lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on their father's side. All right. So I'm going to keep moving along in these scriptures, you know. Uh, going to jump to Second Peter's now. Second Peter's chapter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. So what? Yeah, how about some shot going to um, uh, cause those nuclears, the nuclear missiles, man, to hit this place and various other places around the world. All right. Going to cause the elements to um, melt with fervent heat. That's how uh, the planet, the earth is going to get refreshed, going to get renewed. All right. Because fire is a cleansing agent. That thermonuclear uh, fire is going to cleanse the earth, man. All right. Verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting into the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. All right. So, hey, this place, a hey, Babylon, the great and various other parts is going to be nuked, man. Well, the elements are going to melt with fervent heat. Verse 13 is the point. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein, wherein dwelleth righteousness. All right? Huh? And that's what uh, I came out looking for. It's like about that goof ass noise. Um, read verse 13 again. 
2 Peter 3 and 13, nevertheless, we, all right, the hopeful elect, all right, brothers in this knowledge, wisdom, um, in this faith, having the correct knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and truth and sincerity, that's the we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, man. That's what I came waiting on, man, that new heavens and that new earth where righteousness dwell, man. Because right now, uh, it's, this earth is where wickedness dwell. Why? Because Esau, Edom, all right, so-called white man is ruling, all right? So righteousness is not dwelling here now. Brothers are looking for that new heavens and new earth where righteousness will dwell at, man. All right? Um, Keep going on this new heavens and new earth. All right? Not a physical new heaven and new earth. All right? Where, where righteousness dwell at. All right? Where righteousness dwell. All right? A refreshed heavens and a refreshed earth. The scriptures tell you that the earth will buy, abide forever. We're going to get that later on. All right. Well, let's get some more about this new heavens and new earth we want. All right. This is uh, so like here. I'm going to go to the the regular screen. I'll bring this back up. The precept I want. What? Well, so like So lot. Um, this is Revelation chapter 21 and verse, I'll start at verse 1, Revelation 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. All right, that refreshed heaven, refreshed earth, man. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. All right. So that first heaven and first earth is what where we at now, man. What Esau are ruling that, man. All right. In this wicked uh, heavens, in the wicked earth, man, where the food is defiled, homosexuality is running rampant. All right. Two thirds of our people don't know their power. All right. Verse two. And I and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, New Jerusalem coming down from the most high out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and that's how it's going to be the elect will get beamed up in those chariots okay all right and we'll uh, see the destruction and uh, death of babylon the great and what they're going to come back down all right into a, a refreshed heavens and refreshed earth man all right that's that new jerusalem that john saw coming out of heaven all right Going to see uh, the Israelites come from off the, the elect, come down off those chariots, man. All right. And um, I have to grab a quick precept really quick to back up the point I just said. Okay. All right. Because I just said that uh, the Israelite, the elect, are going to be in those chariots, beamed up, looking down upon the death and destruction of fire on Babylon the Great, and they're going to come back down. That's the new Jerusalem that's going to come back down. The elect that's been beamed up in those chariots are going to come back down. All right? This uh, precept to back it up, Revelation 15 and 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the last seven plagues, for in them is filled up with the wrath of the Most High. It's the point right here, verse 2. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the so like stand on the sea of glass having the harps of the most high. All right. So the Israelites going to be standing on that sea of glass, man, those chariots, man, looking at the uh, destruction of Babylon, the great and various other places. All right. And going to come back down to what that new heavens and that new earth, man. Because that first heaven and that first earth is going to be passed away. All right? So I'm going to keep on moving. You know? All right? Hey, brothers waiting on that new heavens and that new earth, man. That's why we hit the streets. All right? Praying, fasting, you know, trying to be the best Israelite we can be. Because we want that earth where righteousness dwell, man. All right? We want to get up, not have to go to slavery, man. Not go to damn work. Not worry about bills, man. We want a, a new heavens and new earth. All right. And the scriptures, as it said on the screen right here, hey, we ain't gonna remember the um 
the former uh, heaven and earth are not going to be remembered. All right. This captivity win. All right. This is second Ezra chapter eight. And I start from the top. And he answered me saying, the most high made this world for many, but the world to come for few. All right. It's beautiful, man. <laughs> All right. That's this world to come is for the elect. Let me read that again. Second Ezra 8 and 1. And he answered me saying, the most high had made this world for many. Yet yeah, this world, man, Babylon the great, this wicked system, this wicked world that we live in now. All right. This world is for many. All right. You want to prosper. You want to get money. You want to uh, be wicked. This world is for many. This world is uh, for uh, the wicked. All right. It's for many. All right. Two thirds of our people and all the other heathens. All right. This is this is the world made for them. All right. Read it again. And he answered me saying, the most high had made this world for many, but the world to come for few. All right. That new heavens and that new earth is going to be for the elect, man. All right. That 144,000 plus that one third remnant. That's who the new world is going to be for, man. The elect. All right. And that's what a hey, brothers are waiting on, man. As we say in Zephaniah, wait ye upon the Lord, man. We're waiting on your how about Shimei al All right. Because we want hey, we want to be in that world that's for few. All right, which is the kingdom of heaven, man. All right. Um, let's get some a couple more precepts. You know? This is uh this is second Corinthians chapter four and verse three. Get it right. Second Corinthians four and three. Con, con, con. See, yeah, 2 Corinthians 4 and 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So if you can't get this, man, you're not a part of that elect, man. You're lost, you know? If it's so hard to you, you can't understand it, you can't get it. Well, why this and why that? Man, hey, this ain't for you, man. All right, you lost. All right? Verse 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded. See, I'm bringing up all these precepts with uh, the world worlds in it, man. This world. New world. Okay? Cause the uh, the men the prophets in the old um, in the old ancient times knew, all right, that that world new world meant ref refreshed world man where Israelites were ru ruling, okay. Saint Corinthians four and three. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. And who is the, who is the God of this world? All right, Esau, Edom, man. All right. Esau Edom is the god of this world right now because they they run the uh, the system, man. All right, they don't run Yahweh by Shimei Al Shah. Ultimately, they follow an order from Yahweh by Shimei Al Shah. But what? All right, they're the god of this world. They control this world. They control the, uh, how the people act in this world, man. But in the world to come, all right, the elect is going to control everything. All right, it says, and the god of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach. Who is the image of the Most High should shine into them? Yeah, so the God of this world has blinded uh, the, uh, the people, man. All right? So we waiting on the gods of this world to go down. And, and what? Our people going to be lifted up. All right? Let's get that, man. All right? This is uh, Second Ezra, chapter 6. And I started verse 7. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? That followeth? All right. So we want the end of the first. All right. We want the end of this world. All right. And a new world to be ushered in. All right. Verse 8. And he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were first born of him, Jacob handheld first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right? So Esau is the end of this world, man. All right? And that's what we're waiting on. We're waiting on the end of the world, man. All right? The, the end of Esau world, man. All right? And we want what? And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, that new world, man. That new earth. All right? That new heavens and that new earth. Jacob is the beginning of that, man. Where righteousness would dwell, man, in the new heavens and the new earth, man. All right? Read that again, man. Just in case anybody having, oh, he talking about a new world. No, man. All right? 
2 Ezra 6 and 9, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. All right? A refreshed a world, man. All right? So Esau is the end of this world, man. All right? That's why we want this place to go down, because Esau is uh, ruling right now. All right? And Esau is the what? The end of this world, man. All right? And Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. All right? So I'm going to get uh, one more precept, you know, and wrap it up. And this is about to prove that uh, the earth is not talking about a literal new earth, all right, and a literal new heaven, man. All right? It's talking about a refreshed heaven and a refreshed earth because it's going to get cleansed by thermonuclear fire and we'll have different uh, leaders, all right? The Israelites will be leading, all right? So let's get this. I'm going to wrap it up. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Salakia. Ecclesiastes chapter one and verse four. One generation passes it's like in one generation passes away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. All right? Proof that the earth abideth forever. All right, so we're not talking about a new, a literal new earth, man. A refreshed earth and a refreshed heaven where righteousness dwell, where the Israelites are ruling. And that's what brothers are waiting on, man. All right, patiently waiting on your how about Shemia shot for that new heavens and that new earth. Okay, so hey, I don't want Ratazah, that was edifying. Brothers, keep the faith, keep waiting on that new heavens and new earth because it's going to be ushered in shortly, man. All right, call Halaya how about Shemia Shai. Shalom.